Last year's general election gave the Conservatives an uncomfortable reminder that although they like to proclaim themselves the guardians of law and order, the issue can be wielded against them too. In 1997, Tony Blair demonstrated the effectiveness of his tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime, mantra. Twenty years later, Jeremy Corbyn pledged 10,000 extra offices on the streets of England and Wales, and attacked the cuts in funding and staffing imposed by Theresa May in her years as Home Secretary, when police numbers fell by around 20,000. What was thought to be safe territory for the Prime Minister proved more treacherous, especially in a climate of heightened fears over terrorist attacks. Last month the Labour leader returned to the fray, pressing Mrs May on the rise in recorded crime. Gun and knife crime have seen particularly sharp increases in recent months. The personal experience and visceral fears of voters, as much as the statistics, make this an issue that resonates across regions and classes. On Wednesday, the police inspectorate warned that under pressure forces are in some cases taking days to respond to 999 calls that should be dealt with in an hour. While the most urgent calls met an effective response, those deemed to need a prompt response within an hour, including, potentially, serious assaults, faced a much longer wait, an average of 15 hours in the case of Cambridgeshire, for example. The report warned that cracks are beginning to show due to the continuing financial pressures and sharp increase in demand, and that unless forces take urgent measures, the lives of vulnerable people could be at risk. The failure to respond efficiently to a report of domestic abuse, for example, not only compromises the chances of an effective investigation but threatens the safety of survivors and sends a message to perpetrators that they can get away with it. Of course, there is not a straight line between the number of officers and the prevalence of crime. As Home Secretary, Mrs May had to ask police forces to improve efficiency. Equally, however, you can only slash budgets so far before the effects are felt. This is particularly the case when the burden of work is increasing for reasons both good and bad, the threat of terrorism on one hand, a more serious commitment to tackling domestic abuse and sexual violence on the other. Police are now taking the strain caused by austerity in other areas, such as social services and mental health care and, as Mr Corbyn has pointed out, youth and community work. The sensible solution would be adequate resources for these services, so police are not diverted from core responsibilities. Where extra officers are indeed necessary, the right bodies, such as people with the technical skills to tackle online crime, would be more helpful than simply more bobies on the beat. The government promises that its serious violence strategy, due in late spring, will stress early intervention and prevention, seeking to steer young people away from crime. This would be welcome, and certainly better than reverting to simplistic, failed strategies of more offices and longer sentences for offenders, even more worrying given the truly shocking state of prisons at present. But such promises must be translated into policies backed by funding, including for all the other services whose failures otherwise dumped more crime at the door of the police. As the Guardian's Beyond the Blade series has shown, a holistic approach is needed. This is a complicated message, perhaps harder to sell than tough talk. But it would do more to protect the public.